Max. It's RJ. And you're listening to Streaming Cassettes. I'm Wingman of the Year. What's going on? That in. Yeah, we have to. I feel sometimes we go like too much in our show and we forget that we're part of this like network. This big brain thing. We're the staple. We are. We're the goddamn meal. <laughs> but no, okay, enough of the bullshit. So as you can see, we have some people to our left or right, however you're watching it right now. And let's just get to it. This is Judgment on the show tonight. How are you guys doing? Good. Good, yeah, guys. Let's go down the list and obviously we'll explain what who Judgment is and the group and everyone as individuals. So we have to our far right here, we have Cam. He's on bass. We have Riley, who's drums, singing. We got the lead with uh, James and then Ev. Boom. Yes, it, not bad, got not bad. Good job. <laughs> So, are you excited? You were the one who found Judgment. I don't know how they found us or we found them, but, you know, I mean, they're kind of close to us. So yeah, it was fate. Yeah, it was yeah. fate. That's it. We found each other. Yeah, they're in the northern land. We're Canada Junior down here, so we, we understand. It's like it, we're blood brothers, honestly. Yeah. We're the <laughs> hats. Absolutely. <laughs> Facts. So, uh, let's, let's kind of dive into this. So, Judgment. So, obviously, it's kind of more in the rock scene, but what's kind of the – genre like what's your sound what what's kind of what the group's all about i would say uh, that our sound derives from like um early 2000s kind of like post hardcore and like uh like the emo kind of eras um we touch on bands like in our sounds with like maybe under oath silverstein uh, alexis on fire that kind of like post hardcore vibe um we uh yeah like it's basically like a nostalgic 2000s vibe that's what we could say uh, do you guys have anything to add <clears throat> yeah. lots of like singing that. screaming like really like uh melodic like vocals and like deep lyrics um they basically touch on like a lot of overlooked societal issues um <clears throat> mental illness you know drug abuse things like that like i could go on um lots of things that are overlooked we like to write about that and like touch light on those um in like a positive way um our music's like, you know, I guess, as I said, a little on the heavier side, post-hardcore, um, hard rock, I guess you could say, if we generalize it. Um, yeah, that's like, I don't know, our sound. Yeah, yeah we, just, in a uh, nutshell. we just try to write about positive things, which in like the emo post-hardcore genre isn't, you know, super heard of. But, uh, you know, we want it to be different, but we also stand for everything that we sing about uh, and play to as well. Yeah, do a lot of charity work outside of the band and stuff like that. Try to help our community wherever we can. No shit, that's awesome. It is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, like, like, judgment, like, can either be a negative or positive thing. And, like, when we were, uh, I guess, like, forming this band and project, um, <clears throat> that name is, like, something that can be perceived as positive or negative, um, which is, like, totally cool. And uh, judgment is something that we all experience in our lives. So uh, that's like just a little background on the name, I guess you could say. Okay. One thing I was kind of curious about is um, I saw a lot of the music you have out now is kind of more in the last year. Have, is this kind of a newly formed band or have you known each other for a while? And then just maybe now the projects are out kind of like, what's that backstory? So it's not necessarily a new project. We did form judgment within the last year. So our first single came out in February of 2020. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, that was a bit of like a long time thing coming for us. Uh, so we had discussions. We were previously under the alias of Four Judgment, uh, and that was formed actually in 2016. So we've been kind of jamming, doing whatnot for just about four years now with me included. Uh, they started previously without bassist, and I came in. Um, but yeah, so that's been like the gist of things. So Judgment is relatively new. We have three singles out under Judgment. And then other than that, though, we've known each other our entire lives. So we all went to elementary school together, actually. Uh, high, high school. Um, and College. Yeah, literally college, everything. So we've all been really close, and that's kind of made it easier of a bond uh, to go about our music and yeah. take us as far as we can because we all know each other so well. Essentially, we are a brand new band mm -hmm. and brand. Um, as Cam said, like just like early 2020, late 2019 is when we like really – changed direction and uh uh i guess just like focused on uh um like i guess what was mainly in our hearts like at that time and now which is just like making a different style of music and and uh, uh writing about uh, uh positive change that's great that's so cool yeah i think so 
So I know you had some more technical. I actually want to go off what they said. Um, okay. Yeah. Listening to your songs, um, I thought you guys were like together for like ten years playing and releasing stuff. Like mm. you guys sound really, really tight. I want to give you that. You guys sound tight for a post-hardcore band. Really Thank you so much. That. Thanks, bro. Yeah, we honestly we well before COVID happened, we were yeah. practicing like two to three times a week. Um, you know, writing lots, but. A lot of the time, you know, with playing shows, we were playing our sets over and over again, like two to three times every session. Um, so we got to the point when we went into the studio with these songs, uh, we could play them really, really tight. And that's something our, our producer, Sam Goyana, actually touched on as well. Um, Sam has done bands like Silverstein, um, Intervals, Rarity, uh, uh, there's Holy a ton, great. there's a ton more, but um, he was a he was a great producer to work with as well. But yeah, Jeez. that's something that we like kind of take pride in, but like low key, but we can't really like do right now is uh, perform live. We uh, like we appreciate the comment on the on our recorded tracks and shit, and like lots of things can sound uh, amazing on record, but definitely like uh, it's something that we miss playing live because. Uh, um, yeah, being a, like a, a like a well performing, I guess, uh, metal band or post hardcore band is, um, as we've been told, uh, rare to come by. I guess you could say so. Um, yeah, it's something that we definitely really miss and look forward to getting back to. We also do have some uh, live performances on our Instagram, which is oh, uh, nice. what we mainly focus on. Um, I guess social media wise, um, we don't have a Facebook right now. This is kind of a long story, but. We have everything else pretty much, but Instagram's kind of our home, I guess, for, for this band uh, and then trying to expand on other platforms. But um, if you want to check out some like live stuff, us doing, you know, stuff live and unrecorded, um, then you can also check that out at our Instagram at Judgment CA. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. And on Twitter. Yeah. Bumping a big Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Bumping a big Twitter game lately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hashtag heavy, right? <laughs> Dude, there's a, literally this guy. I don't know where the hell he's from. Yeah. But like every morning, he will like tweet at us and then just hashtag hard rock or hashtag metal. Like every <laughs> day, I'll wake up and be like, "Fuck yeah, Johnny!" Like, oh, no, no, yeah. 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 yeah, he actually oh, hasn't done it past few days. I don't know. Yeah. Message. <laughs> up, yeah, you have like those fans that's like if they haven't talked to you after like 90 days, they're like, shit, they okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, report. <laughs> people just they're like, especially our Instagram and shit like that, just like they'll like randomly hit us up and like we'll hit them back up and we'll be surprised and like we'll talk like pretty much every day. Like mm -hmm. Richard from Cos yeah, like, like, all the fucking time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. Different like artists and stuff too. Just like it's cool. Cool. Honestly, that's so cool about social media. Having the internet and shit's cool. Yeah. Yeah. As it it really like, is. Yeah, it's weird, man. Get the odd death threat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all just some weird stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh we my god. It's kind of it's it's kind of weird just Get reflecting on it. it. Just like kind of we're not like a super popular band, but we're kind of um growing sort of <laughs> rapidly especially within these last four or five months um mm. since we dropped our last single define alive um <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah no it's cool it's, but, uh, a lot of people have been like i don't know it's, it's just it's so weird um kind of talking to people and then like people. you know you're like our favorite band or like mm. you've made such an impact on our lives and like that's obviously what you know, we're trying to do of ours is but for us to hear it at this point right now is such a weird thing and yeah. it's like taking some getting used to i think for all mm -hmm. of us very validating too uh, yeah that too well, yeah. it keeps you grinding honestly i mean we have like this network we start out in august so we can kind of relate maybe to like the new journey through the covid season here i guess and mm -hmm. um yeah. it is like when you get like somebody who buys a shirt or like they watch you on live and you're like oh this is awesome you're like Oh yeah, like it's like fuel in the tank to keep going. Like we're yeah, yeah. not an idiot, you know. See those numbers, bro. Yeah, it's just nice to just like know that the music that we've like written in like our parents' basement and shit, <laughs> as cliche as that sounds, yeah. um, it's just cool to like know that uh, it's reaching other ears around the world because like at this point in time and like since the beginning, 
that's just been our goal is just like get our shit in, in people's ears our music that's, that's so cool <laughs> I was bring this up at some point. Um, yeah, I was gonna bring this up at some point, but you touched on it, so let's bring it up now. So obviously, with COVID, obviously you're kind of conf- you know confined to like more studio recordings, and you talked about live shows. I feel like a lot of people know, probably from a global standpoint, I feel like you guys may have a better wrangle on COVID than we do stateside here, um, and I feel like maybe you're in a better position to have live shows, maybe than we are, but hopefully everyone is. Do you have like kind of an idea of what you might be doing live or has there not been any talk really? At the moment, not anything. It's been honestly really tough. Um, we have, yeah, live stream opportunities that uh, we're trying to take advantage of right now to at least get in front of our audience, but it has been extremely difficult. And that's something we've struggled with over the past year. Like uh, we went to lockdown literally almost a year ago today. So uh, it's been tough even getting together and trying to have writing sessions and whatnot, right? So. Right. Um, definitely something that we will be trying to work towards one, as things open up in the future. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, it is a struggle for us and I think almost any artist or um, musician at this time. It's trying to get your name out there and uh, do those sorts of things, but it's a waiting game at this point. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. it was just We're something I noticed. I'm, like, oh, I'm curious if... I'm curious if like Canada's in like some magical better place than us. I feel like we're just no, we're, we keep we're, screwing shit up. I don't know. Yeah. We're just outside of Toronto, so it's it's pretty much the same deal here. Yeah, okay. we had our daily highest COVID total for Ontario today. It was like over seventeen hundred in Ontario alone, which is like we've been like sub a thousand for a while, and now it's just starting to boom up again. But people oh, are getting. Wow. He's now, I don't know what's going on with you guys, but like uh, the elderly are starting to get vaccines now, which is dope. Canada kind of acts like they got shit under control <laughs> yeah. and they don't. Like, <laughs> we, we, we don't know what we're doing just yeah. as much as the states, but we just kind of put it out to the public like we know a little bit more, you know? You got some good marketing. I like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, give the PR guy a raise. <laughs> I mean, that's another thing about COVID, though. It's been like, a, we've discussed this a couple times where it's been like a blessing in disguise. We've had the yeah. opportunity to, because we played as many shows as we possibly could prior yeah. to, and it did take away sometimes from like a digital presence or online media right. uh, yeah. kind of thing. So now as we're adjusting and we're getting used to only digital presence, having that, it's been a it's been a good time to like reflect and see what we can do online. So when shows come back, we have both elements. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and just to add to that. Although like it's been a little bit difficult playing uh, live and things like that, we've as, uh, as Cam said, we had like a couple uh, live stream opportunities pop up, but with like COVID and a bunch of restrictions and whether people are available or not, it's a lot harder to uh, run a live stream just because of like the people that we need. Um, aside from that, though, like we have been tr- uh, trying to be more proactive on the back end, like with radio stations and like talking to various bookers that we've been in contact with before in the past, just to let them know that we're like still huffing on the online presence and like we still have like things to release content to push music to tour just to let them know that when the door is open that basically our hand is raised um so Mm -hmm. when shows do come back we'll be hopefully heavily ripping with uh, some good support yeah our hometown just got a super dope new music venue too so that's a huge boost for us like we're on the short list for like the first month of them playing, whenever the fuck we're able to play live again. Yeah. So, right. super, super cool venue. If you're ever in Oshawa, check out. I don't, what are they calling it now? Is they, they, oh, yeah. They, they, call it the they, released, they haven't released the name Not yet. So. Yeah. But anyway, we're trying. Yeah. That's dope. So you yeah. said you're near, um, like you're in the Toronto suburb. How close, kind of, in context? It's about 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, 40 okay. Minutes. Nice. That's great. Yeah. On the old 401 there. Busy <laughs> Skyway in the north. In the world. Yeah. Yeah, 401 west of the business. Damn. Yeah. That's why we always take the 407. Yeah. These guys are like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Watch the I mean, I'm, I'm all for, I mean, I know like the six guy. We got Drizzy. You got some Putin. Yeah, you know, the weekend. I got the weekend. Is it the yeah. weekend? Rush. Yeah, Rush. 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 Yes. Yeah. Rush Limbaugh, yeah. We got three days grace. We got some forty one. We got Billy Billy Talon, Alexis on Justin Bieber. Yeah, we got Bieber. We got got Sean Mendes. Sean Mendes. He's a picker. Music is an import from Canada, straight up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Silver Steen. 
Yeah. Who else is actually yeah. an article about that? You know, it's really yeah. about like Canadian artists and how they actually impact the top 100 all time streams songs on Spotify. And 28 of the top 100 songs all time on Spotify are from Canadian artists. That's wow. Nice. So we on? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shania Tween, she's Canadian. Yes. Oh, wow. yeah. Country um, icon Shania Twain. Avril Lavigne. Okay, we're right. Done. Yep. So, yeah, we're done. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> we didn't, and we didn't even touch Nickelback. Look at that. Look at the roll for us. Don't get him going. Listen to him. <laughs> Production wise, it's not bad, but. It's not <laughs> That's all right. Great, yeah. Great, yeah. Probably more technical things we should probably discuss about than Nickelback, uh, RJ. Yeah. Well, their production is not bad, but song wise, dear, dear, just no. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> How you remind me is a decent song, but yes, things get a little iffy at times. Dude, how you remind me? Because the first laugh. song is always a slapper. They already know, like, okay, this is the best shit yeah. I've got. And then at that point, you're just kind of balancing yeah. out at that point. It just connected with people's hearts. <laughs> mm-hmm. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. No, the reason they're hated is because they got so much radio airplay. Like people just got sick of hearing them. That's literally it. Like yeah. people just got annoyed. It was like every fourth song was a Nickelback song. And like I don't know how it was out. in the states. But yeah. In in Canada, it was literally like you you put on the local radio yeah. station and you're hearing them. Yeah. Yeah. Canada also has laws. I think like every like X amount has to be <laughs> the <Nickelback> laws. <laughs> yeah, <I get> it. <laughs> yeah. Like, every every like third song had to be like a Canadian artist in Canada on like the really? radio. So they just filled it with Nickelback. Yeah, they just said fucking work on Nickelback. Yeah, fuck it. it it's it's thirty three percent. It's something like that. You probably know. Okay. Article's gone. Yeah. So about you guys more, I know RJ had a couple questions on, um, actually, you know what's one thing is, so how is like, you talk about your writing process for some of the stuff, like would be addiction or mental health. What made you kind of decide to be very vulnerable with your, um, your writing process? Yeah. Um, for me, honestly, um, I've always liked helping people. Um, when I was in school, um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Like I, I always wanted to be a musician. That's been my main goal. But then in high school, you know, I was kind of thinking, you know, what could I do for work? Um, I, I started thinking like maybe I could be a therapist. Anyways, didn't have the grades to be a therapist, whatever. They also don't make that much money. So I, I kind of playing off of that. That's kind of where the music came in. Cause I was like, I've been playing music all my life. This is what I wanted to do. And music is therapy in a lot of ways. Like, I don't know one person that uh, hasn't been helped through their life or a, a fraction of their life with music. So I think that um, a lot of it comes from that standpoint, just wanting to help people in general. And, um, you know, a lot of the music that is out there right now um, it's, I don't know, it's just very negative, um, just talking about very negative things, which is relatable in a sense, because everybody kind of goes through struggles, but I kind of wanted to write about negative things, but at the end or during the song, they kind of resolve themselves and it gets better. And I just want, I just wanted people to realize that life can be shitty sometimes and everybody has shitty parts of their life but as long as you keep pushing and keep working on it that it, it can all be better mm. oh yeah and then from, from a group standpoint too i feel like i don't know growing up you always like want to like be a part of something bigger and whatnot and just like being able to grow communities surrounded by like judgment and positive and negative aspects has helped us like show that you can give back even as a small group in growing that you like have that ability within yourself to give back to your community, uh, no matter how small that is. So to be able to make an influence or an impact uh, is another big reason and a reason why judgment came about to writing about the social issues and then also making a difference about them. So hmm. I think that was an important aspect. Yeah. I mean, I, we both have talked about our mental health and, different things we've experienced and it's just it's cool to see that i feel 
maybe in the last few years, but even like today, like you can kind of do that without having like being shamed or anything like that, that door, the door's open. And it's really awesome to see that. Cause I feel like if we do have that communication, it's going to be better for society as a whole, but then also you have a better connection to your fans, to your music, to each other in the group. I think that's really awesome. I don't, I don't mind being vulnerable when writing, uh, because I feel like a lot of people are not vulnerable. Um, you know, uh, more people are coming out and talking about uh, uh, stuff to do with their lives, which is great to see. But a lot of, there's a, a much more people that are scared to do that. They don't know how to do that. Um, so for me, I feel like, you know, if I take that step, then maybe it can influence other people to take that step. Or maybe that song is what they need to kind of push forward with whatever it is that they're dealing with. That's great. Yeah. I would say like August Spring Red does something like that. Like it starts out like uh, and like grunty and very heavy. And then like towards the end, they kind of get to that like, hey, don't worry. It's yeah. Gonna be okay. Yeah. yeah. They're, a, they're a Christian band, aren't they? <laughs> August they are. I don't know. Yeah. I, think I think so. They like they don't they don't okay. label themselves as it, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. I think they I thought they were like Texas or some true. Yeah. I thought it was kind of like an under oath thing where they they were like a Christian post hardcore band. Sure, no. But I yeah. was red sick. Yeah, they are sick. I just like kind of started getting into them. Like I was into them when I was younger a little bit, but like I really started listening to them. And like their guitar works fucking phenomenal. Like it's nuts. Like there's like eight fucking time changes throughout the song. Like it makes no sense, but I fucking love it. <laughs> They make it work. Uh, yeah, that's one of our, our RJ's favorites. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, no, our August friends rest though. Mm-hmm. What else you got over there? I want to ask Riley a question. What else you so, got? Being a drummer and being a drummer myself, how hard is it to sing and play? <laughs> um I get asked this question all the time, like a lot. Uh um honestly man like it's always came a little bit natural to me um like having uh just like uh maybe a little bit above average level of coordination um uh like legit like i don't know like when i first started doing it in the band um it was kind of like when we were writing our uh i guess you could say our debut record for judgment um like ev had me like singing a bit more on on like a lot of the tracks well a lot of the tracks now but it, i kind of just like i don't know we just like started working it into like my playing and like tying like subconsciously tying like certain things that i'm playing with like words that i'm saying in certain songs and um but anyway to go back to your question is it hard um at times yeah it is uh sometimes when we do covers i find that like i have to really separate my brain and the notes that I'm trying to reach from my limbs and the click in my ear. Uh, it's like a lot of like weird separation and I honestly don't know how to explain it the best man, but some of it's really challenging, but I worked through it. Um, yeah. Uh, my, like, like, I don't know, like my father and my family and like, he was a singing drummer. So I think that's maybe where I get this genetic slash like gene. Um, but he, but uh, anyway, aside from that, uh, yeah, I don't really know, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard at times, but uh, yeah. I think the more that I practice at it, um, which I have been trying to consistently more often, uh, the better I am at singing because the older I get, the, the it's not going to be as easy to do anymore. Um, I think actually the hardest part about it, RJ, is uh, the cardiovascular part of it. Like just trying to like sing notes and then also like, they like keep the beat and remain intense and shit. So yeah, it's a big kerfuffle and stuff. You are ambidextrous too. I'm True. sure that yeah. probably helped. It does and also yeah. before Riley played drums, like Riley's <laughs> a singer and a guitarist. True. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. um so maybe that sort of helped too, being able yeah. to coordinate your singing with your guitar and yeah. then being ambidextrous and then True. playing drums your whole life as well. And yeah. I don't know, it could all tie it. It's a lot of, yeah, no, you're right. True. Cause like when I played guitar and sang, I remember I used to struggle with that a bit. 
and then like it comes natural to you and mm -hmm. i don't know it reminds me of, this just like reminds me of, like in the hangover where alan's sitting at the table <laughs> counting cards and all the numbers are flying around his head <laughs> <laughs> some crazy know. equation i yeah. think he's so overstimulated by all that shit going on like i couldn't deal with it yeah i'd probably have an yeah. anxiety attack. that's what i'm saying it's crazy i think it's cool <laughs> as fuck though man like swear to god it's just like it's not oh, something i really yeah. worked at it's kind of just something that we <laughs> implemented in the band because i could sing and play yeah. drums and then it just like all happened and then here the fuck we are <laughs> like, yeah. it was weird though because oh sorry. i was gonna say literally just out of practice you're like yeah. yeah do you think you could sing and play this and i was like i can try yeah no well, like like on like our first like record <laughs> on like another project like i was like doing some harmonies and shit and like backup stuff live so like that got me in but what were you gonna say no i was just gonna say like when we were kind of talking about it i was like you know, because we started screaming in our new music, and it was way too hard for me to scream and sing True. and go back and forth for full sets, you know? So um, that was one reason why. Obviously, Riley has a, a stellar voice, which is another Thanks, reason man. why we <laughs> wanted him to start singing and stuff. But it was kind of like, I don't know, man. Like, you think he could try? Yeah, and he's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. 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 And then we did it, and then he did it yeah. pretty flawlessly there has been a couple times where i've i've challenged him a bit and i'm like okay play this fucked up drum part yeah and then like i'm gonna give you this shit to sing over yeah. top of it yeah. and then sometimes it takes a little bit but you That's always true. Get, yeah, you always true. Get, yeah 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 there is yeah like there's definitely stuff that i've had to work on for sure which uh yeah it's taken a bit but um then then they'll yeah, they'll hopefully be more shit, but I don't fucking know. It's just something weird. <laughs> you try keyboards too, like Eddie Lee? You know, play no, no, that's the thing. It's like I've, <laughs> I've always been like so intrigued by piano and stuff, though, but I've just never taken it upon myself to try and play it, which I probably <clears throat> I mean, drummers already do 10 things at once, so. Yeah, no, that's they say that it goes hand in hand, like uh, percussion and keys. Sure. I can believe that. It, it it's I give you credit. It really is. That's crazy. <laughs> but can we talk about the wonderful movie reference of Alan in the Hangover? <laughs> like I'm just, I had to pin that in my fucking head. I'm like, we need to talk about how wonderful of a movie Hangover is. <laughs> I did have a key moment, you know. It was this, or I was out of the band. So <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you carried the segment, to be honest. But you know. <laughs> Fuck the singing drums. How about the hangover? <laughs> no, it's very talented. So, no, I'm not shit on it at all. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so one thing we need to talk about is you guys actually won an award. Shout yeah. out to that. And it was in, I don't want to butcher, but it was the Canadian Independent Music uh, Awards? Video yes. Awards. Video Awards. Video, yeah. video. Independent Video. Yeah, okay. I knew there was like one more uh, pronoun or adjective in there. Yeah. So it was for your song Terra Firma, right? Terra yeah, Firma. that was the first one we released. Yeah, cool. Okay, so one thing I think that's cool um that I don't think a lot of artists do, like maybe in the size you guys are in, like on the like on the upbringing right now, is sometimes people don't like take the time to make a music video. Uh, I have yeah. a brother who does like electronic music, and they've yet to they do like some lyric videos, but never like an official one. I say, yo, like do a video, like just give it a try. How did that process go, and what was kind of the storyline behind that video and getting the opportunity that you got? Um, we were fortunate, yeah. like yeah. one of our homies that we played in a played like some shows with in the past. He was in a band called Parkside, Roberto Spapadora. That I just Spapadora. Spapadora. <laughs> Don't know his last name still, but uh, he's a videographer. Like he does like a bunch of music videos. He like shoots weddings, and it's his actual career. He does like. Does some sort of video thing for some company, but the like real estate, and real estate, like yeah. Right. Like he's been a homie for a long time, so we kind of hit him up. We we're like, yo, like we just dropped this track. We want to do a music video. We want to promote this correctly, and that was like the biggest thing with the music video to have that visual to promote to. If we're running like Instagram ads, like it catches someone's attention, right? If you have a video or, to go along with the song, as opposed to just being like album art and stuff like that. Like it's like if you're gonna spend money to like run ads, run it correctly. So. We had the idea of a greenhouse because do you want to tell like the terra like what terra firma means like this this was like yeah I mean was writing the song terra firma is pretty much solid ground separate from the sea and the sky. Um, when I was writing terra firma, I kind of just 
wanted to write a song about dirt. Um, I, I was <laughs> I was watching a lot of Gary V. If you guys know who that is, he's a motivational speaker. We yeah. love him. Yeah, at that time when I was writing it, he was talking a lot about the dirt and shit like that. Just like, you got to taste the dirt to fucking whatever, taste success yeah. pretty much. So, oh, yeah. yeah, so I this was this was years back now. He doesn't really touch on it too much now, but he'll probably come back to it. He usually does. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I wanted to write a song about dirt, so then that's, that kind of came up. I started... Um, to make dirt um this like you know it's a solid structure it's the ground it's a gravity it keeps you grounded and it's safe um and then i was trying to say that like flying was the sense of freedom and uh self-expression and doing the things that you want to do in your life um and a lot of people uh especially you know it, to do with music um if you know somebody in music, you're kind of like, eh, like, that's sick, but like, you know, what's, what's your million mean? or fucking, you know, what's your backup plan, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and those people, I understand that you, you're looking out from a, a good place, but for us, we're going to do what we want to do. And that's what that kind of, kind of what that song is about is that uh, we're just going to fucking. <clears throat> Fuck the people disguised as gravity, and we're we're going to fucking soar, and we're gonna just keep going no matter who's trying to bring us down, pretty much. Um, so that's sort of the idea of the song. That's fucking um, dope. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you, thank you. Um, so <laughs> when when we were thinking of the music video, um, I think it was Rye that first said like uh, it would be cool if we did it in a greenhouse, and we all thought that idea was sick. Um, so me and uh, and Cam. Went out for a couple of days. Landing the greenhouse was fucked. Yeah, it was like <laughs> yeah, it was, it was that situation was crazy. We were looking for like months, and it was two days before the video shoot. And this is where your band is about to go. Uh, and uh, we were go we went to a couple of just local greenhouses yeah. and uh, walked in. They're like, no, there's not a chance. No one's got like a security deposit of like close to hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. Like in insurance and shit. Yeah. So we we're like, we're four guys and one videographer, like how we don't have that kind of money. And everyone's like, we can't just in case someone gets injured, blah, blah, blah. So we're freaking out. We're like, we have this videographer that we hadn't met yet. We're yeah. kind of ready for like video purposes other than playing music. And uh, we're like, man, we need to have a location. So we end up walking into Kingsway College. It's just around the corner, actually, from where we're located here. Walked in uh, after all this stress, months and months of searching for a location, and we're just like, hey, do you mind if we shoot here? And he's like, yeah, as long as it's not like in like April or May. We're like, no, no, like, two days from now. It was in January. Yeah. Winter. And we're like, okay. we're like, no, two days from now. He's like, yeah, go ahead. Like, Give her. <laughs> so that's like the story behind the location. We we're so stressed out, ended up falling together kind of perfectly. Where I kept staying the whole time. I don't know how it's gonna work, but something's gonna fall yeah, in place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like something's gonna work, and literally two days before that location kind of quit. But I don't know if someone else wants to talk yeah, about the music video. Yeah, itself. no, I got some bad, and then we're yeah. good. We're cleaning everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fucking, that was sick. Uh, the greenhouse was heated, which was super hype because we filmed it in the winter, and there was like customers going in and out of it and shit while we were filming it. It probably took like at least like maybe like a nine hour day to do that yeah, entire video. Wow. Um, yeah. I was going to add something about uh, the rope. Maybe? Or the no, I was just going to say like the process of the bit. So when we were like, uh, like thinking of rebranding, like our, uh, like our band and like the music that we're making and shit. Um, like we had these songs recorded and basically like we, it's a very single driven market. So we wanted to like pump the best content that we could into each song. So that's like kind of like, well, that is where we came up with the idea to do um, a music video for that song. And then obviously uh, the, the songs that we continue to release just because uh, it's like it's a good tool for the song. As the guy said, it's a it's a good visual for uh, people to attach to the audio. It serves as like a really good uh, promotional aspect for it, as James said. And then like, I guess the main reason uh, for like the music videos and things like that, they're timeless. And uh, and they provide uh, shit. 
And the last point, boys. <laughs> we're almost there. Bring her home, right? Bring her home. <laughs> no, I was just gonna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so here, we go, boys. here we go. You got no, this. No, I think that. Uh, oh no, our main thing was that we just wanted to up our quality of production and content and output and and basically like our overall fucking the way that people look at our band yeah. like we wanted to appear professional because this is what we're doing yeah, this is our career exactly it brings a massive sense of legitimate legitimacy and and so on and so forth so that's the entire music bit story yeah. but i i just don't have I was gonna say, I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. one more thing yeah. i just want to touch on the ropes a little bit just oh, kind yes. of um, the, there's ropes in the music video that kind of appear about halfway through. Um, we're playing and then all of a sudden these ropes kind of appear around our limbs, our neck, our feet, and they're kind of pulling us throughout the video. Um, at a certain point at the bridge, uh, where there's kind of like this breakdown of music, um, we're starting to get pulled aggressively, um, feeling you know it, we kind of wanted to tie in this this sense of like being held down and also lyrics in the um, chorus there's lyrics that say i'm not your puppet on a string um syllables are sharpened but your words won't cut these wings so i uh, we just uh, rob was actually rob spadafora the director was the one who um, mentioned the ropes and we thought that was a really good idea um, and I think that that really elevated the quality of the music video, and it also pushed the message of the whole music video like further. And, yeah. Huge. Yeah. 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 And we didn't expect to win an award, which is fucking sweet. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. award was amazing, and it's a true honor. And um, thank you to everybody who, who voted. Yeah. If you're um, and it, it, it's still it's still so crazy. It's just a, a weird thing, but yeah. Mm. Yeah, actually, I wanted to follow up on that. Um, well, quick thing. I love the Gary V stuff. Yeah, we, like, fuck with him big time. And I remember, like, that whole, like, Cloud and Dirt's thing because he had, like, a, a shoe drop, right, with K-Swiss, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, I wanted to get that pair really bad. Um, actually, off camera, I'll tell you a little more on Gary V from our world, but I don't want to hold on because I want to talk about you guys. Uh, yeah. But the other thing is, is with, like, the award, how does, like, a nomination process go? Did you actually submit it? And I know some of them are submit and then some are like the critics choose and are actually looking for the video, the song, uh, how'd that process go? So, um, it was actually a friend of ours. Uh, her name is Patty. She's actually in the define a live music video. That's the girl who's in our define a live music video. Oh, okay. Um, she had just, uh, forwarded me, uh, Instagram posts and said like, you guys should apply. So, I took our two songs with music videos, which is Terra Firma was one and Define Alive was the other, and I submitted them. So basically they chose the top whatever it was, maybe 20 of the top music videos for each category. Um, both of our songs got chosen, which was super humbling and super cool. Um, wow. So they said that, um, they were both in the metal category at the time, but we had both our songs in one category. So we actually put the final live in the rock category. We moved it over. There was a lot more competition in the rock category, a lot more people, a lot more videos and stuff. So it ended up doing pretty well, but it didn't make the finals, right? The finals were based off of fan votes. So anybody could go on their website and vote um, at any time. Uh, I think it was limited to once per day. Yeah. Um, it was like rounds of voting. There was like first round and second round. Yeah. All so public. The voting. first round was like, there was in and around 20 to maybe 30 videos, depending on the category. And then the second round was the finals and it was just the top four videos. Yeah. And then the top four videos we, uh, we got, were obviously invited to the, um, the award ceremony, it was like an online thing. And so it, it got announced that night and then those videos got, um, the, the winner of each category got uh, rated by judges and then the, the winner of that got like a grand prize sort of thing. Um, we did not win the grand prize, but we are obviously still humbled to, to be in the position that we're in. So that's kind of like the breakdown of the whole process. Okay. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just to touch on that, just to like 
even be like, accepted in and then have like a fan backing and support system uh, right. to see how that's like grown and whatnot since changing your judgment like have not just like friends and family but having fans go out and vote and support us and help us like bring yeah. on a really like international award is super humbling and very awesome like something that i don't know i never would have thought of yeah it's, you know it's, what really I mean? cool, it's super crazy it so there was over twenty two thousand votes for the medal category so yeah like there yeah. was you know people were voting it was a legitimate thing which yeah. makes it cooler but. there was there was like every other video that was in the at least top four were like very like yeah, well done substantial fans and like too. yeah very good music like musicians all around like there yeah it was it's very humbling to win because there's a lot of good artists that were involved it was best metal music video mm -hmm. in canada or at the canada media yeah it's a long title <laughs> <laughs> Long title for our quality award, right? Yeah, <laughs> better be a big trophy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like wrapping around. Yeah. Give it a hug. All right. Oh, yeah. Is it like the Stanley Cup? You get it for like a day or something? <laughs> I know, right? I'll be wicked. I don't know about cereal. I was just going to say, they got to throw it out. Yeah. You have to throw it out. Sanitizer. <laughs> No, I don't really know how it works. I think there are. They're sending awards. us. They're sending yeah. us stuff. Yeah. Fuck they're yeah. apparently sending us uh, something physical. I don't exactly know. Um, they just have to touch base, base with us this week. We also got like thirty yeah. five hundred dollars worth in prizes too. Something. So. Ooh. Not cool. Get beer. Cheese. <laughs> Cheese. Yeah. No. Super cool. I think one thing we wanted to touch on was like their EP possibly coming out. Yeah, they have a new EP coming out. Heck to, yes. Yeah, we we don't know when yet, but uh, we're in the process. It's probably I would say it's probably coming out in the spring. Yeah. Might push into summer. We'll see. Yeah. There's um, a lot of like logistics going on with it, and like that's kind of like, especially with COVID, that's another huge thing. We had so much planned last year, and it changed and. We've just been adapting to that for a while, and while we continue to adapt and like focus on releasing the EP, although there is one coming, um, we're just gonna like continue pumping the music that we have and uh, just basically like focusing as much content on that stuff as we can mm -hmm. while we like work on yeah. releasing this. EP will be coming. We have all the music Same. recorded. Like music's been recorded for oh, time. Yeah. It's just like album art and then having a release plan. Making like, sure yeah. it's all like done properly and yeah. presented the way we want it to be. What were like the influences like for this EP? Did they change from previous writings? I, yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. So yeah, right kind of touched on who our massive influences were at the very beginning. Uh, but yeah, we used to make pop punk music, so influentially uh, lots changed, uh, which pushed us towards post hardcore. Uh, and I was getting more involved in post hardcore music as well as emo music from early two thousand warp tour type stuff. Rory mentioned like under oath. Um, Silverstein, Silverstein. Like, like big influences, Under Oath, Alexis on Fire, yeah. like counterparts, even like they're the yeah. Canadian, uh, like metalcore band, mm -hmm. pretty big band, actually. Uh, what other like influences? And if we want to throw like Sam hard Sam. rock stuff yeah. too, like Three Days Grace was a big one back yeah. in the day, yeah. Yeah. Rice, um, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, like well, it was, was just a uh, bunch. Maybe yeah. even a little data remember in there. Yeah, bring yeah. Yeah, data yeah. remember a lot. Bring the horizon yeah. as well. Yeah. I know, man. Yeah. yeah, bring the horizon too. Yeah. For yeah. sure. So like those would be large artists. Obviously, like anytime you listen to something, you have the ability to maybe take an influence, whether it's a small part, a melody, something like that. Yeah. Right. There's a bunch of artists we've always listened to and all have similar tastes. So um, and some that aren't like even heavy music yeah. and shit too, right? Yeah, no, for sure. So yeah. ultimately, yeah. ultimately like uh, we do have a lot of influences, but I feel like we do yeah. capture our own sound in this. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't think people would listen to it and say, like, they sound exactly like this band. Um, I, I'm sure there would, obviously, you would hear influences, but I yeah. think the way we put songs together, our lyrics, our melodies, and, and what we're playing... I think uh, I think we bring something new to the table. Honestly, cool. pretty unique. Yeah, man, yeah. Like, <laughs> and, like, it's nice because, like, people do, like, say that. That, like, you know, like, obviously there's influences that you guys can see here. But, like, that's such a cool thing to say, bro. Because uh, it's, it's, that's what we're trying to do. It's, like, just 
be our own influences in one mm-hmm. and I don't know, be judgment on our own. Yeah, have our own sound <laughs> yeah. influence others. It's, important. it's just like um I, I think that we do uh, we we love the sound of the early two thousands uh post hardcore emo sort of realm. Um and I feel like a lot of other people do as well. Um so something that we did on this EP in particular is we didn't go super modern with it. We kind of just put our own spin on what you would have heard in the early 2000s. And that's, that's ultimately was our goal. Um, yeah, we, we love that type of music. And I think a lot of people miss that type of music. So we're, we're bringing it back to those people. Yeah, no, we're definitely here for that. I was going to say there's outside noises in our studio. Um, yeah. and you know what? Fuck it. Behind the scenes. So my next door neighbors actually do like modified like race cars and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like a, a race or yeah. something because I hear them screaming at each other and like power washing their cars. <laughs> no, no, no. So we good. can't hear anything. That's, we can't okay. hear anything. That's fucking awesome. No, it is. Like they do like dirt tracks and stuff. It's great. Like they're in high school, the kids, they're good kids. But it's so funny because sometimes like you'll be 11 o'clock at night, you're sleeping, whatever, and then they come back from a race and it's like, it's like the house shakes. You're like, yeah. <laughs> it's like funny as hell. Um, but I was going to say, I think we're all millennials in this uh, chat here. So I kind of vibe with the whole early 2000s shit right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. That was in my playlist for sure. Yeah. 1997 is cut off for Gen Z. Yeah. We're on the cusp. We're on the cusp. We're on the cusp. We're all 23. Yeah. Oh, wow, you guys carry yourself, carry yourself well then. There you go. Yeah, you just look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are old. <laughs> I'm fucking 31. I'm 30, so. Yeah, we're you're old. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. Yo, drop your stint to every team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Okay. You want to ring light? Um, no, we have like this little, this is really behind the scenes. <laughs> little block. Hey, oh, yeah. yeah. That's so light. This is funny. Oh, yeah. I mean, without the light, you know, still got the glow up, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Don't do it. <laughs> Shit. Chris from New York. I see a lot of New York members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, he grew up in Jersey. Um, I actually have family like in upstate New York, like kind of the Albany area. Um, cool. We do have some other Vermont stuff. It's just very weird that all the New York stuff kind of collapsed in the, this one region in the room. Yeah. yeah, we have like oh, license yeah. plates and shit. Mets, Yankees, Buffalo. Yeah, <laughs> there's Buffalo. actually a pennant there from. I lived in Idaho actually for like five, six years. So there's one way over there. So yeah, Good. yeah, we have a wide mix of shit up here. So that's sick, man. Went to Florida one time. Oh, nice, Disney World. Golden no, Golden we went to Universal. Universal. I was a big Harry Potter guy, so we did the Harry Potter staff. Well, I've oh, heard, nice. I've heard that's worth it though. Yes. Yeah, it was cool. There was like a three D ride. That's all I kind of remember. I was like six. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I want to go back down the universe or go down the Florida again because I know Universal has like the um, Super Nintendo World coming out next year or two. Like, really? you know, it looks like Mario. You do Mario Kart and shit, like a ride. I, I'm so here for that. Can you like race people in it, or is it like on a track? That I've yet to determine. They showed the stock images looking like a happy family, but I can't tell if they're controlling the ride or not because if you can control the ride as yourself i'm so gonna like side swipe some people yeah i would oh, yeah. Throw, yeah. Some, yeah, throw some bananas yeah. i would yeah. smuggle bananas in yes yes well, red shells yeah. Yeah. Blue shell. heat seekers oh, yes. red oh, shells oh. are the goat they really are <laughs> Can you imagine getting hit by a blue just shell then a red <laughs> shell? And then it goes, so now I just like throw up. Yeah. Just like being like. <laughs> <laughs> if we're in this wormhole, who's your character on Mario Kart? Luigi. Uh, I like baby, baby Mario. Mario. Baby uh, Mario. Yes. The Luigi factor. I, honestly, I like Luigi. I'm kind of split. I kind of. You're mess with a couple bro. characters, but a DK is yeah. probably my top. I mean, no. You're going heavy, okay. Toad, Toad, Toad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mushrooms, Toad, are heavy. Dude, Toad is like, <laughs> fucking G in yeah. this game. Toad's no, no, he is. Swear to God, I'm actually. Dude, the tiny characters go fucking fast. I like exactly. Koopa. Koopa's my shit. 
Dude, yeah. it was pretty OP in that, man. Like the red shell one. Dude, yes. My favorite yeah. of all time is Double Dash on the GameCube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have your buddy, and you guys can like rotate and just go spaz off on items. Yeah, it's sick. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. I have that too yeah. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. If I do the doubles, I was. Oh, I don't know. I switch up to like Yoshi and Birdo <laughs> just because there's a random of the couple going at it. <laughs> Dude, they have. They they're totally fucking. They told me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On Yoshi Island, like, this is my land. How good that Yoshi's getting is probably insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nuts. <laughs> now that's a sloppy toppy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 You never thought you'd come on for uh, Mario Kart uh, Kink Talk, right? Yeah. I'm about it. Yeah. Fuck. So, uh, are we gonna write a fanfic or what? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, that was that was some fun. Um, that was funny. did we? I don't think we talked about the scenes yet for the Canada and the U.S. They kind of um, we, we touched, touched on it. We touched on it a little, but for like metalcore and hardcore, um, do you notice any differences from the states in Canada? For like that scene? Yeah. Um, Come on, Smith. Look, look. <laughs> I was just making sure I was clear for my shit. No, that's all good. I mean, I'm not right now, like currently, I'm not super, I don't know, in depth that many US hardcore bands, but for sure, there's definitely going to be similarities. Like, uh, a lot of 90s hardcore and whatnot is what influenced the post hardcore scene. Uh, and then even metalcore to this day for like 2010s, 2011s uh, would be what still influences us and a lot of stuff we listen to. There's a lot of cool Canadian bands that aren't as recognized in the hardcore scene. Mm -hmm. um, and then also like, I don't know, trying to think of brand bands like Comeback Kid, yeah. uh, even Counterparts, but they're like melodic hardcore. Yeah. Um, I feel like the, yeah. the bands in the States are the each, traditional each, hardcore. Yeah, but I feel like each state kind of has their own sound yeah. on. There's like New York hardcore. Yeah, places. yeah. It's it's weird, like California I feel hardcore. like for Canada, it's not really like that. I feel like it's sort of so, more sort spread of one, like the like, sections. Yeah, I feel yeah, like every small. metalcore band right now kind of just sounds like Architects, but yes. yeah. 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 Like, architects <laughs> and Architects and Burns Red. There's like, yeah, everyone kind of pulls from that. I feel like in Ontario too, especially like Less so metalcore, more so folks hardcore. If you're doing any screen, if you're doing like the good cop, bad cop kind of thing with the screens of the planes, everyone fucking pulls from Alexis on fire in Ontario. Everyone, because they were the band to look up to. Like they were that band that like kind of broke through that like glass ceiling for like streaming and shit like that. And like on like MTV and much music and shit like that. I don't know if you guys know much music. I don't know if that's just a Canadian thing. Yeah, but uh, they were kind of that band and, like if you ask any Ontario band that's either like pop punk, like in any like of the harder genres, like they'll have looked up to watch on fire one way or another. For mm -hmm. sure. Easily. For sure. Okay. Yeah, I, think I, I hear a lot of that in Ontario. Yeah. Can I say for like yeah, dates, like I know a lot of older bands, like bands that we look up to would have been like influenced by people like Glass Jaw, Quicksand, uh, hardcore bands. Um, but yeah, there's no one that, not specifically that word. I would say influenced directly from hardcore, uh, but again, yeah. any like any happy music, like we'll listen to it and indulge what we get. Yeah, it's like we're we're kind of like second gen post hardcore if you live by like the idea that mm -hmm. post hardcore was derived from hardcore, like the OG hardcore, because yeah. we're derived from like that post hardcore that was derived from the hardcore so like, <laughs> this, is this second gen we're the double post now yeah. I'm thinking of, like, presents. <laughs> we're pre-post hardcore <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's sick man yeah <laughs> i felt like there was just a bunch of stuff happening yeah. <laughs> there was like eight ideas yeah right yeah. that's that's kind of i don't know that many like smaller metalcore bands from the states to be completely honest with you like we've never toured there like we were we were aiming to tour there probably in 2021 if shit, shit didn't get fucked up but uh yeah we we played with some states bands but they've been more so like pop punk bands and stuff like that like we played with like uh boys of ball which are super dope don't know if you know them. super yeah. cool like i guess they're kind of post hardcore they have some screen yeah, screens. yeah. 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 some chuggy chuggy screens. Like, like, yeah. yeah and then we played with uh 
on the other weekend, some some band like that, right? Yeah, they were like super punk. Yeah, they were like a like a pop. yeah poppy punky pop. band, a, a punk pop band. Easy, they were pop. Easy yeah. punk. Yeah. yeah. yeah when no, you ever get the chance to tour stateside, we'd love to have you here in the uh, yeah. in the burning. <laughs> Even, trying, dream, like, yeah. even for our genre of music, like Canada yeah. predominantly is a lot of right now country pop stuff like that, uh, where there still is like a larger post hardcore scene in the States. So definitely somewhere where we want to tour, uh, hit a few different cities and obviously get to oh, see yeah. the world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. Don't worry, you know, when we can actually tour the States, we'll be giving it. And you got, we'll, we'll make sure to pass through New York. Whether it's like New York State or New York City or whatever. But, okay. Uh, Hell yeah. We'll find you. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, That's we're only a couple hours from Montreal, so we're not too far. There you uh, go. We'll meet. We'll meet you guys at the show. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I'm here for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, so are, it was great when you were talking about where you're from. Are you from Vermont? Yeah, we're both in the, uh, the Rutland, Vermont area, like Southern. Uh, okay. True. I lived. I played hockey. And my roommate was from Vermont. He's from uh, Burlington, I think. Okay, yep. We're about like uh, probably hour, hour fifteen minutes south. Yeah. Like we're like we're literally about halfway between like Burlington and Albany, New York. Like right in that area. You guys go to Montreal a lot and stuff like that. Is that like a thing, Vermont? You have a funny story. Uh, <laughs> no, we want to. My wife did. Uh, she went to school up there for a year and a half at Concordia, uh, yeah. and you know met friends and stuff. It was funny. I was going to go up there once, but uh, plans changed. Couldn't go. And my wife was with her parents and stuff, and their car broke down. This was like 2015. Give a little context. It was after, I think, two days after the Paris terrorist attacks way back. And they're like, we need you to pick us up at the border. I didn't have like a passport and enhanced license at the time. I'm like, okay, is there like a little like halfway house I can chill? Because like, you know, I don't have anything. They're like, no, yeah, you'll be fine. I'm driving. I'm driving. And I, sure enough, you see all, because Quebec's more French, I see all the signs, Viviendo, welcome to Canada. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, you know, the, the Mountie police, they were totally chill. They're like, okay, where are you from? They asked all that. And I'm like, all right, you just park here and you can pick them up. Great, no problem. Chilled there for an hour, picked up my family, and I was going to go back through the States. Well, America, they don't fuck around. Uh, oh, so they're like, problem. do you have any shit? And they're like, no, right, you got to come in with us. So I got put in the room for 10 minutes and like, you know, you have like a birth certificate. I'm like, no, I was at like a football game and I was like, I just wasn't planning on this. It was just for the moment their car broke down and like, all right, you have like three minutes to leave the premise. If not, like, we're going to like have to keep you. So I literally just booked out of there. Like next time come up with something unless you're in trouble. I'm like, okay. So that was my one only time to Canada. So I would love to go there a little more proper, but yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Montreal's really fun. Montreal's like probably my favorite city in Canada. It's like very European feeling. Like it's got like old Montreal. And it's like all like cobblestone and stuff. There's a Ferris wheel. It's pretty neat. Yeah, I've heard it's pretty. It's pretty cool. That you have like the different environments in the city, like that, like old city yeah. and like the newer spots as well. Yeah, and there's like the mountain too, and like literally like billion dollar houses. It's nuts overlooking the city. Yeah, crazy stuff. We actually played a show there. It was super sketch. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like everything's in French. Yeah. It was, I think it was ran by a French mob or something. It was yeah. pretty sketchy, but <laughs> yeah, they were like Russian or Romanian or something. Like it was real weird, real weird vibes. Well, we you came played... out in one piece though, so that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah it was so sketch because like there was like a bunch of dudes just sitting at this table talking in like some foreign language. It was probably it was Russian or something like that. It was like some Eastern European language. And, like, I think it was, like, Cam and I walked in to, like, load in. And as soon as we walked in, they just stopped talking, looked at us, and then went to the bathroom. Super sketchy. And then my buddy, Dave, who's from Montreal, came and was like, this place is run by, like, the mob. Like, like don't play here again. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, sick. You're right. Yeah. We got paid. Amazing things. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. All right. I think we're at RJ's big three questions. Oh, okay. As I was looking at it, I'm like, I think we got to that. I think we covered I th- most I things. Think th- I think they're ready. Okay. They might be ready. So, biggest hour of scary. It's pretty cash. What would you say is the hardest thing about being in a band? Uh, getting people to listen to your music. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the hardest fucking thing. Yeah. I thought he meant, like, with 
Oh, us. oh. But, like, I don't know. It could be. <laughs> that, could be I think that's what, that. like, yeah, that sure. is probably the hardest part. Sure, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. genuinely, bro. Yeah. 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 Like, at, like, operating as a collective, I think that's the hardest thing. But, sorry, go ahead. If that was no, I was going to say, it's, it's open for um, objectivity. <laughs> so, knock yourselves out. Like, making sure that everyone's in, in, like, in agreement on absolutely everything that yeah. we do. Because sometimes it's like two people are like, yeah, and the other two that ends up being a conversation or not. It's not that it just yeah. like it becomes where it's longer spurs of time. We're good at working with each other. We all know how we react to situations. Yeah, we've known each other for a bit, as we said. So, like, we're all right. Yeah, that can definitely, like, be sometimes they struggle. But, but it's, it's not the hardest thing. I would say, yeah. I would say that's probably easier. I mean, for me in general, like, especially compared to a label man, it's like the financial situation, right? Like, we don't have, like, thousands of dollars of foreign marketing to get people to listen to our shit. Yeah. Like, recording a record is expensive. Gas is expensive. Food. Food is expensive. Heater is expensive. Yeah. Definitely uh, the financial part of it. Alcohol is expensive. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> What's your... I mean, uh, t- uh, depending on the how I'm interpreting the question. I would say the same thing as Cam, to be honest. I think um, just like being, just being in agreement, like like Cam said, just in, in everything that we do, because there's some things that like, let's say I might be passionate about doing, but they might think it's a bad idea. So then we don't do it. And then like, I mean, it kind of sucks at first, but then obviously, we get over it. We're still a, we're still a band. Yeah, sometimes yeah. like I'll think I'm a good idea, and then look at it a month later. Yeah, that right. idea sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> Although it might be a challenge for us to like agree on everything sometimes because of like 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 as I've said, like feeling more passionate about an idea than like another person and things like that. I think that. Although it's difficult, we ultimately just try and come to the best idea that pushes the band in the best direction. That's I know, but that's also up to interpretation as well like yeah. true but we all eventually agree on yeah it. eventually we do come to some yeah. sort of consensus like there is an end to the yeah. to the discussion but yeah. i yeah i mean just our goal i guess yeah yeah, yeah. just agreeing on shit money and then getting people to listen to your music yeah that's probably the our base three yeah yeah <laughs> They're all valid, and I honestly think they're very relatable for our uh, our journey over here. I mean, not like wow. the performing part, but like getting people actually like listen to what you do. I that yeah. hit that hit me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and creating an audience for yourself. Yes, you know, but what happens is, is that it's like a slow burn. And I think once you have that moment, it then turns into like a wildfire. But you just yeah. have to get to that point, you know, the patience. Yeah, a lot of patience for sure. Mm-hmm. What is like one thing people don't think about when they start a band or when they start playing music? Like, is it finances? Is it, you know, like you guys touched on being together all the time? Like, what's one thing you guys didn't realize? Well, didn't realize. Didn't, didn't realize when we started it? Like, started or like when you start playing music or when you yeah. started being in a band? Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. Like, I guess I didn't realize how much of my life it would take up and how how much of my brain it would take up, but I'm cool with it. Yeah, no, I feel, I feel like, I guess I didn't, I didn't realize this is, we yeah. think and read this yeah. shit every day. Literally, it's like all in second. Like we might like, you know, work our jobs to get by and shit like that. But this is like, this is where the, this is where our hearts are at. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely the time consumption aspect. I feel like, like it's, I'm not, I mean, it's not, bad. no, neither do I. I don't think it is a negative yeah, yeah. at all. It's more so like, I was like, oh, cool, we're going to be in a band. And like, oh, then it's like all these ideas and you're constantly coming up with them. You're like, what's the best practice we're going to be doing? You're constantly thinking about it. And it's almost like you're never away from it, but in a good sense. And you're like, holy shit, this is literally my whole life. Yeah. But in the best way possible. I guess I didn't really know that, like, I didn't, we didn't know that we, like, wanted to make this, like, our life. Like, we did. But then it's like, what does it take to do this? And then you, like, figure it out. And you're like, you got to keep doing it. I don't know. I would, I would say sort of that but i think more of the everything except for actually playing the music like when you think of being in a band you're like oh i'm just gonna play a fucking guitar and play with my friends and we're gonna go 
play in a bunch of places. In front of people. Yeah. So, like, there's so much more behind the scenes stuff that you, like, yeah. the people can't yeah. see that's going on. Um, True. You know, through social media, um, ad campaigns, just creating content in general that's not directly Absolutely. music, you know, like, it, we, we started a podcast that we've kind of been slacking on the last bit, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> um, you know, we started a YouTube channel that we're trying to create content and, and, and covers and stuff like that. So um, I don't think I really thought about that kind of stuff, yeah, true. but I'm not complaining about yeah, it. No. Yeah, no. To touch on that, like, I didn't think about that either, like how we all have to be like our everything for yeah. like a long time like we have to like we have to like drive ourselves everywhere fucking you know what i mean market for ourselves pay for everything ourselves like it's not just like as i've said just like playing it's music not fun and games it's, yeah, it's not just fun and games it's not just like traveling and playing music yeah. and driving around for you can't have like your own business and if you don't run it no one does yeah that's what i was gonna say like i didn't know like how much it was just gonna be a business yeah like, you, like, don't really think about that when you're, like, jamming in your buddy's garage. <laughs> fucking God, playing line through six. a Line 6 spider. Like, you <laughs> don't think about like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a dude out there. Dude, solid answers. Yeah, we had a lot of different ones. I think the I think we had two were, like, oh, you got to be really patient. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Fair yeah. That is fact, so 100%. Yeah. They're right. Like, I, always, yeah. <laughs> I always constantly want the outcome. Like you always want to see that because you're like, well, I just want to get there. But then a lot of the times, the best part of your journey is trying journey. to get there. You want that immediate gratification. Yeah. We all have like such big ideas that, like, honestly, like I don't even know if huge bands are thinking about some of the shit that we think of. But like. We kind of want to do them now, but we know that it wouldn't work if we did them right now. Yeah. We, we have to wait until we have like a bigger fan base to do these things. But yeah, I guess steps. it's good to think ahead, I guess. But yeah, but yeah, there we have to be we have to be patient. Yeah. I was actually gonna say something like that. Like you can't just do everything you think of because yeah. of the limitation. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, it was like I was reading this thing real quick, like to touch on what they were saying. It was about the weekend and how like when he started in Canada, like the artist the weekend, and how like his promoter or his manager like was getting offers for all these like massive shows and all this money and yada yada yada. And he could have went from like zero to a one hundred, but his manager or like his like uh, publicist or whatever, whoever was running at the time, just basically wanted him to like take the necessary necessary steps that it took to like have a, like a career with a lot of longevity instead of going from like zero to 100. So like he played the small clubs and, and built his career and did all this shit. And I, uh, and I, I don't know, I think that's what we're trying to do. That's cool. I, yeah, I, yeah, 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 I just yeah. read it like, yeah, it was, it was like just some, him Yes. To, to get to that point, yeah. like if you and just like, jump, the there's a lot base. of steps like in the between. That's yeah. like the one yeah. I wonder where like, oh my God, you just get hit with yeah. like fame or whatever for that very brief period of time, but you don't know how to sustain it. And like as a band that's in a post hardcore genre, like a lot of bands in this genre can die out. And I guess like we're just trying to like create longevity in any way that we can. I don't mm-hmm. really have a specific. Yeah. You know, just, just being genuine and taking the steps necessary that it takes to do this as a full-time career and support our fans that support us. What are three things you would tell like a young musician? Like somebody comes up to you, he's like, I want to start a band. What's like three top things you would tell them like right now? Find some solid people to do it with. I would say that because there are, (laughs) if you can, it's hard, man. It is really hard. Like a lot of people, uh, what's good about uh, music nowadays is that a lot of people can't make music on their own. Um, uh, For me, it feels way different creating music on your own versus creating music with people. I, I love creating music with, with these guys. Um, but, but finding some good people because we know a lot of bands that go through members like all the time. And they're good, they're good bands. Too, like, 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 yes. yeah, it's, it's crazy, but it, you have to do it because uh, for us, we get into like, you know, a complicated situation where if I didn't know these guys, I would just say, well, 
fuck you guys. I'm just going to go join another band, I you know, know, like yeah. they're a solo project. It's shit, <laughs> like, or whatever, yeah. but it's not, it's not that easy for us. We've known each yeah. other for so long and we, we feel like we can kind of just work through anything uh, at this point. So yeah, if you could, if you could try to find some solid people to create a band with, I would say that's definitely one thing. I would say the same thing, just like network, like put yourself out there. Um, like we were really blessed to like always be surrounded by each other and like this like band and project really fell into itself very nicely. Like I'm personally super blessed about that. Um, Cause like I've always wanted to play music personally, we all have. Um, yeah, I would say like network, put yourself out there and like um, let others know like what you're trying to do. And I'm sure that there's like other people that want to do the same that you'd be able to like partner with. Um, yeah, um, and don't stop, like have a lot of perseverance. Like get knocked down stand back up, yeah. all that shit i was gonna say like you have patience and literally like keep creating because you're gonna have those days where you're like fuck this is shitty or yeah. like whatever and it's like about having those bad days and keep going like Brian literally just said persistence don't be afraid to be creative too like whoever you are yeah. in that artist like keep developing skills and growing into that person because eventually something will click if you don't have it right away no one has it like right away like you usually have to play a bunch of shows, work on like your craft, develop a team, the things come into play. So yeah. persistence and like don't stop creating because eventually I like, believe that something will come of it. Yeah. I would say just fucking practice. Like the centerpiece of it all is the music, right? Like try new things, fucking get out of your comfort zone. If you throw enough darts to the wall, something's gonna stick, right? You need to find a way to stand out. And another thing that was like really big for like me personally was like realizing that your art is valid like your ideas like maybe you don't think they're that great but someone else might like them think they're really great mm, right so true. just make sure that you realize that like what you're putting out is still good like it's your it's you like you're putting that out yeah don't uh <laughs> definitely don't scrap things that you don't like mm -hmm. um uh, i've i haven't really done that in the past which left me with a stockpile of lyrics or ideas that I have on my phone that we we used in our new music that I just thought, hey, I kind of, you know, I wrote a song like three years ago about something like this, or I think that, that this could fit like nicely in here and we've done that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, um, I think, yeah, just put out the content that you like, you obviously have to um, build an audience you have to do also what other people like but but try to stay on your path uh, and be happy with the things that you put out because I think a lot of people can just get wrapped up into like the fame and start releasing stuff that they just know or think people are going to like versus what feels right to them What's I, authentic. I yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Problem, bro. Oh. I mean Sometimes it can backfire, but at least they can say, you know, or it, I don't know how you're saying it, but in a bad way. Okay, in a bad way. But, uh, <laughs> if, even if you put something out and people don't like it, at least you liked it enough to put it out. And then take that, take the people's criticism, and, and make something else. For an audience, though, of like who is your actual audience, if you're being true to yourself and creating what you want, those are the types of people that are going to be your true fans and yeah. who actually like you authentically. That's the only way if you have longevity of your career, you build those people off of what you love. Yeah, always love be yourself. Yeah. And also, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many things. It's yeah. so hard. But I, I think um, building a relationship with your fans and um, not really caring too much about the, the big number, just try to build as many true fans as you can. Because there's so many um fake scammers out there that are like oh pay me two hundred dollars and i'll get you fifty thousand followers like okay that's great but how many of these people actually like what you're doing these are just random people that they took bots could be fake people and just now you have this big number but it does nothing for you you know um so yeah try to make as many true fans as possible with uh, you know interacting with your fans and thanking them and you know bringing them and making them feel like they are a part of what you're doing. That's some solid shit. <laughs> you know, 
15 tips. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, three times 12. Yeah, 15. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. Because it really is. There's so many levels to it when you're doing a dream or music. or Yeah, it's just a lot of solid advice. That was very yeah, solid. Whatever, like, whatever creative it is, like, genuinely. No. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, as always, Judgment, this has been a blast. But before we let you guys go here, let us, the fans know, let us know, how can we learn more about you guys? Check out your songs, social. I know you mentioned the Instagram before, but Kat, yeah, where can we learn more about Judgment? Yeah, um, I just want to, like, shout out our social media. It's at Judgment CA, um, J-U-D-G-E-M-E-N-T-C-A. The CA is because we're from Canada. Um, you can find all of our music on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you listen to your music on, we have. Um, if you want to talk about our YouTube channel? Uh, we have our YouTube page. channel as well, uh, Judgment CA. Uh, we have our website that is in works but is up and able to be used, and that is judgmentcaband.com. Uh, so you can check us out there. Sign up to our mailing list for exclusive content. We have more stuff coming there where you get to see it before anyone else. So if we have a music video, uh, here at EP before anyone else as well. Um, little things like that. So get exclusive content for us if you're into what we're doing. Merch. That's place. Buy our merch. Buy our merch. merch. We've got merchandise. We've got clothes online too. Buy the Great. goddamn merch. Buy the fucking merch. That's like literally what supports us the most. So. Yeah, at least right now. Yeah. Yeah. They're really dope shirts, dude. Yeah. They're, they're long sleeves. Uh, they're single art for our, our single Final Live, um, which you can listen to on any platform. Um, yeah, and we've got three singles. Yeah, we got three singles. Terra Firma, November, and Define Alive. Uh, the EP is coming soon, so follow us and uh, keep track of all that stuff. And I'd like to thank our fans once again for um, repping our shit, pumping our music, uh, voting for us uh, to win Best Independent Canadian Music Video. Um, and yeah, yeah, like anything else. And that? thank you guys for having us. Thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course. Anytime. This has been a blast. Um, it's just cool kind of getting meet new people. Obviously, like being this is our first international show. So that's amazing. That's sick. That's sick. That's sick. Yeah. And no doubt, like we're we have a second interview in a little bit, and they're from Cali, so we're going like all over the place tonight. I love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so CA to CA. I like that. <laughs> Fuck yeah. But uh, stay with Pulse with us, guys. But as always, you're listening to Streaming Cassettes on Wingman of the Year. Go on wingmanoftheyear.com to get your blogs, your shows, your merch. Hunter and uh, Chris are doing a tear at, like, a sports book tomorrow. You see that? Oh, really? They bought, like, a $200, like, sweet thing, and they're going to, like, make picks and give away T-shirts and shit. They're, like, nice. like all into it. So March Madness yeah. down here in the States. So you got to get your basketball on. So oh, yeah. I've been watching. Oh, there you go. There you go. I see some upsets. I see him, like, notifying. But, hey, okay. as always... Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Peace. Love you. I did hit the wrong thing. We're keeping this in. We're keeping the wrong thing.